David Bowman from Desert Chains. I'm the jeweler and owner of Desert Chains. And in this short series of videos, I'm walking you through all the steps that I go through to take a picture of a gal wearing the jewelry and turn it into something really great that's going to go on my website. Already done a lot. We got rid of the acne. We put it. We took off the old background, put a white background, got rid of a tattoo. Lots of cleanup that we've already done. In this uh, quick video, well, this is probably not quite as quick as the others, we need to deal with her fingernails. As you see, she has completely bare fingernails, not even a clear coat, just plain old fingernails. So what I want to do is I want to paint them in with a color that's going to match her shirt, and then I want to take all the shiny bits on her fingernails and put it over the paint job that I just did so they actually look like real fingernails. So it's actually not too tricky. It's a little tedious, but it's not too hard. We'll try to, I'll try to go through it kind of quickly if I can. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to apply the color that we want, and we're going to just apply it to friggin' everything for starters. So let me first grab my, click on my background layer over here, and I'm going to add an adjustment layer. Adjustment layer I want is solid color. Now, this is not the color that we're going to end up with, and don't worry about all the splotchy stuff yet. I already figured out what color I need that I'm going to use across all the images. So instead of using all the little sliders and all those kinds of things, I'm going to go down where it's highlighted at the bottom and simply put correct color into place. And hit OK. Why are all those splotchy things there? That's all the stuff that we did before. So all the little fixes and repainting are this layer. We just put a color layer below it. So all the fixy stuff is visible on top of the color layer that we just did. We're going to reorder them here in just a moment. Now, the other thing to notice is everything's been, except for those areas, have been purpleified. So even if I, let me go ahead and just drag my layer above all my previous work. There we go. Now it's above everything, except the brightness layer, which needs to apply to all the layers. So there it is. So you'll see it already has a mask next to it. There's the color icon, and then there's the mask. Well, with layer masks, anything that is white is a part of the selection. The mask will apply to the selected areas. So if it's white, the mask is going to apply there. That's in the selection. If it's black, those are all the areas that are not part of the selection, and the, the colors in this case, or the effect, will not do anything to the non-selected areas. Well, everything here is selected. See the icon is white, and everything is purple. So it's pretty simple. All we need to do is just reverse what's selected and not selected. So in this case, go from everything selected to nothing is selected. And then we'll go back and tell it these are the areas that we want. So to reverse the selection, I'm going to just click on the mask over here, color fill level 2, and I'm going to type control I for invert. You can also come up here to the select menu, and there's an inverse up there. Okay, but it's pretty simple, just control I. So now you see that mask is turned black because nothing is selected. So, as with any layer mask, if we paint with white, it's going to add to the selection. If we paint with black, it's going to take out of the selection. So, we are going to go in with our paintbrush and white color and paint using our white brush over the areas that we want to add to the selection. Now, it's not going to look like white ink or white paint on top. What it's going to do, it's going to add it to the selection where that color is being applied. So I'm going to use a white brush over here. What you're going to see is the color. So let me just get in here quickly, and there is our color coming through. Now it can be a little hard to see where the edges are with a paint like this, um, but we can come back later and clean that up. But I do see that I I kind of screwed up that one edge up there. So I just switch from black to white. And I'm going to paint in here with a bit of black. And it's going to remove that. 
I tend to keep one finger on the X key because the X key will switch your foreground and background colors, which are black and white in this case. So if I want to go to, if I'm on white, I want to go to black, I just hit the X key and back again. Okay. This one's going to be a little tricky. Make sure I've got white. Yeah, that X key. So my, got one hand on my pin and one hand on the X key. Now, once we apply the sheen on here and it becomes a bit, bit more transparent, um, it'll be far easier at that point to see where the edges are. And we can come back and either add or subtract to the mask at that point. A little easier to do, then, but, you know, I'm at least trying to get close. Two. And switch back. Let me that a bit. So for all these little sharp edges, like you know, where the fingernail are, I could make a very, very small brush and get in there and try to paint it in. But the fact is, it's hard to get in those little tight areas. So instead, I just overpaint them, you know, let it spread past. Because then I can go back to the big outside area with a black brush, subtract them. So instead of trying to worry about getting in those little tight areas, so difficult, I just overpaint them. Then I come back with the other color, the black brush, and just clean them up a little bit. Okay, we're almost there. White again. Let's just fill this in. It's a bit challenging with um, completely bare finger. Unless you throw a little bit long, they're, they're a little bit translucent. Kind of see through them. Well, if they're above skin, it can be difficult to know are you looking at fingernail or are you looking at skin below it? And to some degree, to be honest, just making my best guess. Now, down here. Like I said, once you get the color into place and the little sheen on top of it and make all this a bit more transparent so all the all the white colors show through, it'll be a lot easier at that point to kind of clean up these edges. But I'm gonna try to sort of get close at this point. About killing myself being completely dramatic about it. All right, so far they look like crap. So this is the problem with painting, is you get just this, you know, flat color on there, which looks nothing like natural fingernail. I'm going to fix that. Just a moment. This is the non-glamorous part of shopping. See, like here, I can't even really tell what's fingernail and what's finger. So I'm just going to have to make the best guess. Here, I'm coming up on a corner over here. Instead of trying to squeeze in there, I'll just go past it. Switch to black. Trim away the parts that I don't. Back to white. And off we go Leave a little bit of that. I may fix that up later. Come in to kind of tidy it up a bit. All right, almost there. So. So, job here. 
One more to go. All right. Make sure I'm not empty spots. And let me switch to black up here. And just out a bit. And last one. Big, long. Straight on. There's actually a lot of stuff that goes on. You know, you got the not only the shiny bits on the top, then you have the cuticles, then you have the right area. It's called something like that. Okay, so let's see how we look so far. Fit on screen. Wow, looks like crap, doesn't it? That's okay. We're gonna fix it. So save. What we need, what we're going to end up doing is hiding everything we just did, making a selection of all those little white shiny bits on the fingernails, turn those into a white mask on top, and place them on top of painting that we just did. It's really not as difficult as it sounds. It's a bunch of little steps, but they're not really very challenging. So first thing I want to do is I want to hide this, because we want to see what's underneath that paint, right? Then I'm going to come back to my main uh, background image over here, and I'm going to select channels. Now, so I've got my reds, my greens, my blues over there. I'm looking for the channel that gives me the greatest contrast between darks and lights. As it turns out, every time I've ever done this, it's always been the blue channel. So we're going to just pretend like it's the blue channel. So let me hide everything else but that. Now, I don't want to screw up this channel. We're going to do some adjustments on the light settings here. But I don't want those to affect the actual image. So anything I'm going to do on this blue channel, I'm going to just copy it down here. Copy it because then I can just hide it later. All we're using this for is to find the darks and the lights. Okay, so there's my blue copy. Now, I need to bring up my color levels because we're looking for those light areas. So color levels is the way to go. Now, quick overview. On the little dark slider, everything left of it is pure black. On the white up here, everything to the right of it is pure white. And there's my midpoint. So ignore the pure whites. We want to make the darks a little darker. We're going to make the lights a little bit lighter. So I'm going to bring up my darks a bit. Like so, not too much. I'm going to bring up my midpoint just a bit. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Then, when I make a selection off of layers here, off the levels here, it's only going to select the light areas, which is fortunately where we've got all the shiny stuff that we want. So, I can control click on the icon there, or I can hit the little dotty ant circle down there. So now it's selected all the light areas in that channel, just in that channel. All right, so we don't want it to affect the main image, so let me bring back all my colors and hide that blue channel. So otherwise, it's going to affect everything. All right, so I control clicked. I've got some marching ants on my screen. All the light stuff's been selected. Back to layers. Now, we need to make another layer which will represent all of these selected areas. It's pretty simple to do. So let's grab another layer off my main image. And then I'm going to fill this as a white layer because we're gonna we're going to use this to affect the mask. And remember, anything that's white, the effect will occur in the select in the if we want to add to the selection of a mask, we fill it with white. If we want to take away from a selection of a mask, we fill it with black. We're going to fill this one with white to tell it where to let that paint come through or where to let all those shiny bits we copied come through. So I've got my layer there, layer 6, and I'm simply going to put that first above my color layer because I want the shiny stuff on top of the paint, right? So then... I need to fill it with white, and um, I think on a Mac it might be Shift Delete, but certainly on a PC you can Shift 
and F5. And it brings up, you can also go up to your menus up top and find it up there. But Shift F5, or I think Shift Delete, brings up the fill menu. And I want white. So, okay. That's made everything white all of a sudden, which is not what we want. We want it only to apply to those areas that we identified in the fingernail mask. So we've got mask right below us. See, there's our color. You know, it's hiding. And there's the mask where we selected out the fingernails. So we want this new effect to only go where we have the selection on the layer below. So first, let me unselect what's currently selected. So, and then you'll see if I right click on it, I can bring up create clipping mask, which basically says only apply to the selected areas below which are the areas we identified in our mask. Now watch what happens next. This is actually really cool. So I still have that color invisible. We painted only the selected areas. We're going to put the sheen on top of them. And this is what you get. Boom. So we're not there yet. Because that's a crappy color. But if you notice, we've got white areas. We've got our shiny areas in there. There's a little, whatever that white half moon thing is called. Down here, we've got all of our little shiny bits. I mean, you know, not too bad. There's only a couple of problems. One is it's the wrong color. Two is now that we can sort of see through, we should probably go clean up the mask and make it a bit more accurate. And the third is those lines are really abrupt, which is not very realistic. All very simple things to affect. So let's start up here. And first, and we're going to fix the color. Don't, don't worry about that. We're definitely going to fix it. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my color fill mask because you either want to add to the selection or take away from the selection, you know, where the color applies or where it doesn't. And again, we're going to use our black and white um, paintbrush. So brush, brush. And I know I, I see I need to add a little more to the nail up here. So I just paint in with a white brush much to add a bit more. Or with a black brush, take it off. Pretty good. And turn over there. That one probably looks about right. This one. This edge. Just ever so lightly. That little round bit. And come down here. Bad. I was pretty careful when I did this. I would try to go quickly, but took away a little bit too much. So let me go back to a brush. Kind of shape for. But it could be just the angle. She's holding. Switch back to that. That one looks pretty good. Okay. So now, what about this crappy color? Well, this layer with the color in it is like any other layer. We can choose what kind of a layer we want. It's got the color. It's got the mask. I'm going to change it. Instead of normal, which takes that super light that was there originally and this kind of maroony color and kind of finding a midpoint between them, um, which gives me this weird pink color, I want the maroon color. So instead of finding kind of a midpoint or blending them together, I want to multiply the effect. The original, which is very, very pale, times this dark red color. I'm going to multiply them together. So when I change this from a normal layer, to a multiply layer. Now I've got the color. Out. Still looks like crap. There's one last thing to do. But you will see at least we've got basically the right color now. Kind of a nice match for a shirt. So the last thing that I want to do is just kind of smooth out the edges. And this is very simple. So while I have my mask selected, which is you know what's selected and not selected, that's the mask. I click on the mask icon. 
And then I'm going to come up here to filter. And I want to put a little blur, a little uh, fade on that so it's not such a sharp, abrupt edge. So filter, blurs, I'm going to add a Gaussian blur. Just a little bit. So what do I have here? 0.8. I might go just a hair. Call it a one, one pixels. Did you see that really smooths out those edges? I might even fix that. So we can keep going back and adjusting the mask if we need to. That's the great thing about mask. Click on the mask icon, paint with white or black, and kind of affect it. So that's there. I should have done this before I added the blur. But I did. I can go back and re add the blur too. Okay. But I think I think we're basically there. Let's see how she looks now. All right, let's see. Fingernails not painted. Fingernails painted. And that looks pretty nice. So it's kind of a it's kind of a long tedious process, but what you end up with is pretty nice fingernails that actually look like real fingernails. So the only thing that's left to do, what is left to do here? We need to add a watermark. So in the next video, which is going to be pretty short, going to crop it to the size that I need which will be 9 by 9 change the resolution down from 300 to 72 so it's you know it looks exactly the same on a computer screen and then we're going to add the watermark image at a 50% opacity or 50% transparency so that is all coming up thanks I hope you're finding this useful